Destiny Preparation Church. Can y'all help me? Put your hands together. Come on. Sound of freedom. We're free because the curse of sin has been broken. And Jesus Christ has set us free. Hello, this is Pastor David Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church, welcoming you once again to the program, Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. So happy to have you with us for the program today, and perhaps you're a first-time watcher. We know we have many people that watch us on a regular basis. Definitely appreciate you, and I pray that this continues to be a blessing to you, and that you'll share the word. But if you're a first-time watcher, let me just welcome you to the church. We are Destiny Preparation Church, located at 1230 Long Pond Road, just down the street from Ridge Road west where Grease Ridge Mall is at. So right in the corner of Grease Ridge Mall, uh, Ridge Road and Long Pond. Long Pond comes down from Ridge, it's split, and before it even comes together, if you come down or heading north on Long Pond from Ridge Road, there's a nice sized brick church that sits just off from the road here, and that's where we are. You'll see the field coming up, turn right into the parking lot, come on down and join us here for our services. We meet here on Sundays. We meet on Sundays at 11.30 a.m. here in the sanctuary. Every Sunday is our morning worship service, and also we meet prior to that for Sunday school, which takes place on the other side of the building in the classrooms at 10 a.m. If you come in the main doors, you'll come in and, and go to the left instead of to the right to the sanctuary. Come in and go to the left and down the hallway and around the corner to all the classrooms and you'll find us there with the different age brackets for your, your, you and your, your family from adults all the way down to young people. Come and join us in our Sunday school or our main services here. If you're not familiar with the church itself, let me just share with you that we are a Christian based church. We believe in Christ. We are a non-denominational church. We're not tied to a specific denomination, but we are an all-believing church in God. We preach the Word of God, share the Word of God, believe in living by the Word of God and all that the Bible has to say. So if it's in the Bible, that's what we believe. And so we believe in the power and the presence of God, the anointing of God. We believe that God's presence desires to be with us and will come and connect up with us in our services. We don't believe that He's just a God that sits up somewhere watching. But we do believe that he's a God that will get involved. We believe if we call on him and ask of him that he'll respond to our prayers. We believe in healing. We believe in the divine power of God through pro prophetic word, through the anointing, through the laying out of hands. We believe that God is real and his power is real and here for us today. If that's the kind of church you're looking for, you are cordially invited to joining us. And by the way, there's no constrictions or restrictions on whom and how you qualify. You don't have to be a certain age. You can be young. You can be old, you can be black, you can be white, you can be Mexican, Hispanic, whatever it is. If you're one that wants to follow after God, this place is open for you. You can be single or you can have a family. That's okay. Whatever the case may be, just come and connect up. You'll find somebody that connects with you as well. And I believe that will help you because one thing that we need today in order to live the life that we're supposed to live is we need support. It's very difficult, it's hard to be saved, to be a Christian on your own in this world. Yes, you have a relationship with God, but to truly serve Him and do the things you're supposed to do on your own is difficult because you're walking through a world that doesn't believe in God anymore, that's falling further and further away. And so it pays to be able to connect up with somebody else who believes in the same things that you do and will strengthen and hold arm in arm with you as we produce and, and do the things and the works of God. You 
are cordially invited to join us at any of our services. And let me just mention, by the way, we have a special one coming up very soon now, just coming up right around the corner. We're preparing our special outdoor service in the middle of the summer. Want to get outside right in the field here. We're going to set up a tent, have a great service. We invite you to come. After that, it's going to be food. We're going to have a picnic, have some fun. You are cordially invited. us at a regular service time. Just be outside. So come and connect up with us. I believe you'll be blessed and you'll have a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord as well. So now let me take you into the Word of God. You've been uh, talking over the past few weeks about various things, and you know, that in this church, the Word tends to flow. It tends to connect up as God leads us from one step to the next to the next. Well, this week, I want to share with you a message that God allowed me to share with this church called I'll Do It. It's about decisions and actions. The fact that we have to make decisions and then take action. Nothing gets done until we first make the decision and then take action on the decision that we've had. If we can think and desire and want all the great things, we want to see things happen, we want things to work out, we want to change, we want to do something, achieve something, but it, nothing happens until we first make a decision that we're willing to stand on and then take action on it. I pray that this blesses you, inspires you, and I hope you'll make a decision, a decision to come to church and then take an action by joining us this week. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you in here with us very soon. God spoke this subject to me, I'll do it. And I want to talk to you about what it takes to make that kind of step. Because everything that we do in God, everything that we do in Christ, takes a, requires us to take a step. God works everything with us in terms of faith. And faith requires oftentimes a step of faith. It's one thing to believe something. It's a whole other thing to step out on it. I'll share with you a little bit the Bible, what the Bible tells us that you know, faith without works is dead. I mean, it's one thing to say, yeah, I believe that that's possible, that anything can happen, that God can do that. But it's a whole other thing to step out on what you believe. A lot of times we say, sure, God could do that. He could change my situation. He could heal somebody. He could fix my problem. But faith doesn't really mean anything until we're really ready to step out on it. So it's important that we come to the point and learn that how to, to make a decision and then take action on that decision. Oftentimes we stumble because we, there's a lack of true decision in our life. And you know there's a lack of true decision when there's no action taken. Amen. A lot of people come into the church, come into the house of God for whatever week you may, you may be here. And here's something that God tells them, God speaks to them and they feel it and they know it's right and they're in agreement with it. But before they get out the door good, it's gone. And the reason it's gone, because there has not been an action taken on that which they believed. Amen. You can believe that, yes, you know what, I do need to be saved. And yes, uh, there is a God. And yes, I really need to serve him. And I really need to do right. And it's a good thing to, to believe that. But it doesn't do anything until you take action on it until you begin to resolve or you begin to respond or you get, begin to make some alterations in your life based on what you believe. Many of us come together every week. We study the Word. We hear things in Sunday school and midweek Bible study and on Sundays, and the Word speaks to us. But it doesn't mean anything until we start taking action on the things that we've heard. Proverbs 29 and 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. And vision is the first step to taking, to making decision and then ultimately taking an action. Vision has to be followed by a decision. We need a vision. We need an idea. We need a concept. We need an understanding. We need a revelation. Whatever aspect that it comes to us, there's got to be something that presents itself to us that says, yes, this is what we need. This is what we need to do. This is the direction we need to go in. But following that vision, there must be a decision. And then following that decision there must be an action. We studied for a few weeks ago the story of Nehemiah and the building of the wall. And in that study, we, we read and we, we, we understood that uh, the, the transition of events there, Nehemiah came to a land where people had already been and where the need had already existed for many, many years. 
They had been released several years prior to that, a couple generations prior to that, to go and build that wall. But somewhere along the way, they lost the vision of what it is they were supposed to be achieving. It became watered down. It became diluted. And they went off doing other things in the same land, looking at the same torn down wall, but off doing other things instead of what they were called to do. Sometimes we get lost in the midst of what it is that we're supposed to be doing. And then we get misdirected. But Nehemiah came with the vision to the people. Hey, you know what? We don't need to sit around like this anymore. Let's build the wall. Once the vision came, then there came a time or a point of decision. When God speaks to you, there comes an opportunity for you to make a choice surrounding what you want to do with what God has spoken to you. God will tell you, you need to get up. You need to move. You need to go. You need to get active. You need to change. You need to do something different. You need to forgive. You need to talk to this person. You need to repent. God will speak into your heart and you'll feel it in your heart. And then comes an opportunity for you to make a choice, a decision as to how to respond to what God has said. Understand that there can be the vision, but if you don't make a choice around it, nothing's going any further than that. Once they saw the vision that God gave Nehemiah, then they had to make a choice and they made the decision. They came in agreement, yes, let's do it. Sounds good, let's get on board. But there was still one more thing that needed to happen after having received that vision, after making that choice. They had to take an action. Realize even after they had said yes, if nobody had gotten together and picked up a hammer, if nobody had gotten a piece of wood or gotten grabbed one of the stones, there still would have been no end result, no result to that thing. Even though it was the right thing to do, even though it was called from God, even though they had agreed to do it, there still needed to be one more step. There needed to be action. Without all three of these, nothing gets fulfilled. So we can stand around wanting to see the glory of God wanting to see what God is going to do, wanting to see God make a change. But understand this, God uses us to change things in this world. God puts us in place in order to make a difference. He calls the body of Christ, amen, to be that which would fulfill his work here on earth. And we can hear the voice of God, but unless we come into agreement to do something about it and then take an action on it, the bottom line is nothing gets fulfilled. We end up standing around looking at each other saying, why isn't God doing anything? Why isn't anything changing? Why is it there's nothing in my life, nothing in my home that's different? I'm still suffering the same problems. What happened? Amen? You have to be ready and willing to make a decision. When God speaks to you, you've got to make a decision. Somebody say, I need to make a decision. Making a decision is similar to the same thing as making a choice. There comes a time when you have to make a choice because a choice is what leads to action, decision, choice. I've got to choose. I've got to choose whether I'm going to do it or not. There are basically three different things that happen in terms of time to make a choice or a decision. Three different responses, if you will, that happen typically in what we deal with. The first one is a choice avoidance. First response we may have from time to time is we avoid the choice. We see the vision and we recognize, yeah, there's a need. There's something that needs to be done. Uh-huh, I hear it. I see God saying something. Yep, I need to change. And there's some things in my life that need to be turned around. Yes, God wants to do something. I see, I hear that. I understand that. But sometimes we, we, once we see this situation lining up, things like doubt begin to get in our way. We have doubts or questions, if you will, as to, you know, for example, what the outcome is going to be. How the, I, I see God saying, do that. I see God saying for me to move. But, you know, if I move right now, then people are going to look at me. And, you know, people are going to be wondering, you know. A lot of times people get in this, God is leading, speaking to you about coming to the altar. Because he wants to touch you. He wants to move in your life. He wants to give you something. And, and yeah, if I get up, people are going to think something about me. They're going to think, you know, I've done something wrong. Or, you know, we, 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 get, we, we, we have doubts about, you know, the situation. We have fears that come up. I don't know if I really want to take that step. I, I hear it calling. I hear, hear what's being said. But I don't know if I'm ready to, to jump out like that. 
I don't know if I'm ready to expose myself. Sometimes in worship, God is calling you. Come on, lift, you, lift me up. Come on, bless me. And, and we, we, get, we get fearful about what somebody else is going to say or about what other people are going to do. And so we hesitate from making the choice. We, we avoid the situation sometimes because we're afraid of what the outcome is going to be. Or we have fear surrounding, you know, if, if I make that choice, then that means I, I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm kind of stuck in it now. You know, I've put myself out there. What happens if it doesn't work? What happens if it doesn't go right? Amen. Think about those people making that decision about building the wall. They, could have, they would have had lots of reasons not to make that choice. Lots of things they could have came up, whereas why, you know what, that's not necessary. I don't know if I want to do that, because if I start making this choice to build the wall, I'm going to make some enemies along the way. Uh, there may be some problems. It's going to take me away from what I was already doing. I had my own agenda lined up. There's all kind of reasons and things that can come up that will hinder you from making the choice that God is calling you to do. Amen? Anybody ever experienced that? Amen. God's telling you to do something, and all of a sudden, I, well, I think about it, this and that, this problem. So what do we do? We, we avoid even making a choice. Choice avoidance. I, I, I'd rather not have to deal with it right now. Let me hold that off. Let me put that on the shelf. When you, you know you should be taking that step left, and, and well, let me just wait just a moment. Let me pause. And our delay oftentimes dilutes us from being able or being in a position to make a choice that we need to make. Understand that there are conditions associated with your choices. Sometimes to make no choice might feel like the most comfortable or safe option. But because you make no choice, you have in essence made a choice. And the choice that you've made, you've limited yourself from being where God would have you to be. What would have happened if the children of Israel, when Christ, when God parted the Red Sea, I mean, you know, they had to make a choice as to whether they were going to go through it. Just because God parted it doesn't mean that I'm crazy enough to step through that. Amen? Amen? They're talking about dry ground, but I see water all, over, all, all, all around me. Amen? I, I still got to make a choice. God has opened the door, but you still got to choose to step through it. There are times in our lives when God opens a door to you, but you still have to choose to step through it. That same children of Israel got to the other side of the wilderness, and God opened a door for them to go into the promised land. And that time, they made a choice not to go. See, sometimes just, just because God opens the door, gives you the vision, gives you the opportunity, you still have a choice to make in order to see God fulfill in your life what he wants. And sometimes the obstacles, the questions, the doubts, the fears around making that choice will hinder you to the point where you will hesitate instead of doing what God has opened and offered for you to do. I can look at you right now and tell you that there are many of you that have gifts and talents in your life. That God is waiting to use, but you have yet to pull the trigger and step into that choice that God has given you. And until you move, until you make that decision, until you choose to step forward, you'll find yourself frustrated and unsatisfied because the thing that God had for you, you haven't reached and achieved, not because God has withheld it, because you have not made the choice that you need to make. Choice avoidance. The Bible tells us, amen, a few things about, amen, making choices. Amen, Joshua 24 and 15. God gave the people a choice. Joshua said, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. You got to make a choice. Listen, if, if you don't want to serve God, then decide who you want to serve. You can serve the, the people of, of this land, the, the, the gods of this land, but you've got to make a choice. Choose you this day. There are times when God leaves it up to you huh, how far you're going to go, how deep you're going to get, how high up the mountain you're going to be able to climb. You realize when Moses went up to, into the mountain, amen, he went for the people. But the opportunity was first there for all the people to go and see God face to face. Oh, the opportunity was there. But they weren't ready to make that choice. So they said, Moses, you, you go on for us. You, you handle this. You take care of this. You the leader. You go do this, and, and we'll be here, and you just let us know what happens. 
By the way, it was in that choice when Moses went up the hill that they found themselves sinning and turning away from God. Why? Because they refused to make the choice they should have made to go into the presence of God. And since they didn't go into the presence of God, they found themselves stumbling following after the enemy. Oh, there, there, there's, 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 there are things that go along with the choice you make, even when the choice that you make is no choice. Choose you this day. It's in your hands. You've got to choose. He go, went on to say, as for me and my house, let me tell you the choice we're making. We're going to serve the Lord. But I can't make that choice for you. You've got to make some choices in your life. Everybody can't just make the choice for what you're going to do, how you're going to respond. You have to come to a point where you make a decision and you make a choice in your life. As for me and my house, who will serve the Lord. Deuteronomy 30 and 19, I love this part. He talks about, amen, I lay before you the opportunity between life and death. I'm giving you the opportunity. He says this, he says, therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. I can't make the choice for you, though. I'm laying before you the opportunity. Life, death. Here it is. But I can't make it for you. You've got to choose. How I many of you realize that when God made us, the unique thing he made about us is the ability to choose. God never takes away from you your ability to choose. He never forces you down a path. He always leaves you with the opportunity to choose. So even when he's trying to help you, he's giving you a hint. Choose life. Amen? It's your choice, but I recommend to you, choose life, but I'm not going to make it for you. You have to make a choice. Somebody else say, I need to make a choice. Revelations 3 and 16, one more. It says, so then because, listen, thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. What is he talking about there? He's saying you're neither hot nor cold. In other words, you won't choose whether you're going to be on fire or whether you're going to go your own way. You just want to be in the neutral zone. I want to be where it's convenient. I want to be where it's comfortable. God is looking for people who are on fire. God is looking for people who have made a choice. God is looking for somebody who's saying, look, I don't care who talks to me. I don't care who talks about me. I don't care what lies are told. I'm in this for God. But because you won't make a choice, you can't really figure out whether you're hot or cold. One day you're on fire, the next day you moved off somewhere else. One day you're in the church praying, another day you're off doing some other thing. You're neither hot nor cold, you're lukewarm. Understand that your being lukewarm, whether you realize it or not, is a choice. You've made your choice where you stand. And God says, because that's your choice, I can't do anything with you. I spew you out of my mouth. I can't deal with you. Even when you're not making a choice, guess what? You're making a choice. The second thing that happens is choice avoidance. The second phase is choice with no follow through. I made a choice, but I didn't follow through with it. I agreed that this is what I was going to do, but I didn't take any action on it. I said, you're right. You know, I need to be saved. I came to the altar. I said, you know, you're right. We want to build this wall. Let's get it going. I said, you're right. We want to do something for God. Mm -hmm. I'm on board. But when it came time to move, there was no movement. When it came time for you to step out, when it came time to be, for you to be on your watchtower, when it came time for you to do whatever you, you had been called to do, there was no response. You, you were still sitting around. The Bible tells the story of the two young men that came, amen, to their father. And the father says, I want you to do something. And the one said, no, uh, I'm not doing that. And he went away. But he came back later and repented. And he, and he went ahead and did it. The other son said, oh, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm here, Dad. I'm here for you. But he, he didn't do anything after. Some of us say, yeah, I'm ready. I want to do it. I'm on board. But then we don't have any action to follow up. We say, I believe God, and I'm ready to do what God tells me to do. Here I am, Lord. I can be used by you, but then God tells you to do something, and there's no action. Choice with no follow-through isn't really any better. You have to be committed to the decision you make. You have to know that when I'm in this, I'm in this for the long run. I'm, I'm standing up and I'm ready. You have to have counted the cost and made your decision as to which way you're going to go. Amen. Luke 14, 28. The Bible, Jesus spoke to them and said, For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? 
In other words, how many of us would get up and say, oh yeah, I'm ready to do this and, and, and not have put everything in place that you need to do it? Amen. How many of us get ready to build a house? Amen. Yeah, I'm here I am. Sign up. Sign on the dotted line. Come on in. Build this house for me. But you stop to look to see if you had any money first. Amen. How many of us, you've heard me say this before, get ready to build a deck on your house, but you haven't gotten a plan. You're just bringing in wood and nails, and you better start hammering them together. You don't have a plan, though. Amen? You have to count the cost before, and as you make a decision, because it's that that gives you the strength and the will to go forward and follow through. You have to make up your choice. The people with Nehemiah, amen, made a decision that they stuck to. And they made that choice, and regardless of whatever else happened and who came against them, this is the decision that we've made. There has to be follow-through to your choice. You have to be ready not only to choose to do something, but to step out and follow through with the actions that follow it. The third is the choice that's followed by action. Once there's a decision, then there has to be an action that's taken. No matter what you do in life, if you decide you're going to lose weight, you're going on a diet, don't decide you're going to start next month. It's too long. By the time it gets here, it's gone. Amen? You have to stop, step into an action when you make your choice because it's your action that begins to put in alignment those things, those elements of commitment that will see it through. As long as you make a choice and stick it on a shelf somewhere, you're liable to lose that until action begins to tie itself into the commitment that you've made. If you decide, amen, that you want to grow, that you want to study, that you want to develop, amen, if you decide you want to go back to school, get online and start signing up now. Don't wait, don't linger, don't forget, because it'll fade away. Other things will fill the gap. Other priorities will come up. Other things will, will distract you. You need to take action on the thing that you've chosen if you want to see it settle in and root into your life. No decision will bear any merit if there's no action associated with it. You can make as many choices and decisions as you want, but if you don't take action, that decision will not bear any merit. This program is being provided by Destiny Preparation Church. We'd like to invite you to join us in any of our services. If you're looking to better understand God's purpose for your life, if you'd like to experience the true presence of God, or you're in need of a church home, join us at Destiny Preparation Church. For more information about our services, ministry, or church family, see our website at destinypreparation.org or call 720-5426. Join us on the road to your destiny.